Hi everyone, it's Dave here again. Uh, up another week. Mm. Sunday morning here in the uh, southeast of England. A beautiful sunny morning it is as well. It's not enough weather frost. Um, <clears throat> forgive me, I'm going to talk about the weather for a little while. <laughs> I haven't done it for ages. This day was grey and horrible and most of which I spent at work but yeah it's really nice today so I get up get up really reasonably early and do um, a video I'm planning to do a couple more this afternoon as I said I don't get a chance during the week and I certainly didn't this week nor yesterday despite me saying to the contrary So this is just a little ramble really, I just like doing it sometimes without anything particular to say, um, sit there having a chat with you guys. I'm smoking the PSP Peace Pipe while it's still in my care and then I'm uh, trying again the first tobacco I tr um, smoked in it when I opened it. There are some hot arts. Brown bogey rum twist. And this time I've let it dry properly. And as you can see, for those of you who watched the uh, box opening these pipe. Oh! It's smoking much better. It's drier. I've been smoking a few others in this during the week. In fact, I've been smoking quite a few tobaccos this week, excuse me. Oh. So I spilled my coffee a bit there. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Um, to me it's just a ideal for twists and plugs. So I had a go, but I'm it was, on another tobacco that I'd been gifted by Eric of Germany and sent me over was um, full Virginia plug. Now, for those of you who know me, you know I've smoked a few plugs. And I think this has probably been smoked once or twice before in the PSP piece pipe. But in terms of cutting this up, never before have I come across a plug as dense as this one. Now, it doesn't feel like it, but <coughs> I've had two bowls out of this and it is quite moist, so I thought I'd cut it up. What I generally do is cut them up, let them dry, and they tend to break down into you know little flakes or manageable pieces to be able to stuff into a pipe. But this one, I haven't had any luck with that at all. It's not too bad to cut and it cuts in nice little chunks. I let it dry for hours and hours and hours but it remains that way like little chips of tobacco which you just put into maybe it smokes fine in the uh, in the pipe but it doesn't break down as I'm experienced with previous plugs but oh, that is lovely you know if any of you and I know there are a lot of you like the full Virginia flake you will not be disappointed in this. Yes, it's strong, but yes, it's got more nicotine in it. And although, you know, I didn't get the whirlies any time during this, although I probably will with this brown bogey. Um, but it's got that lovely, similar flavour to the Fort Virginia, you know, but a slightly richer, I would say. And they may have added something like, I know they put normally put burley in it, but very, very nice indeed. But, you know, one of the most difficult I've had to, well, not cut, but just, you know, it doesn't, stuff into the pipe nicely. Now, <coughs> the other one I've been smoking, not in the peace pipe, was the other tobacco that Eric sent me along with that, which was the Louisiana Broken. And I've had a couple of bowls of that. This is just, this is a the vapour. But, I didn't get, it's quite a long description here, I didn't get around to translating it all. Um, I imagine it's a German equivalent just the marketing spiel that we get, you know, wonderful smoke all this sort of stuff but a couple of bowls it's a lot of preek in there 
um, which is really nice. So it's very peppery. Perique's almost dominant in that. Um, so, and I wasn't getting too much of the sweetness of the Virginia, which I tend to like in a vapor coming out on that one. But if you like Perique, and I do, it's really, really nice. Peppery and that lovely, you know, warm sweetness you get with, with it. At one point during it, there was a flavour I was getting, I can't remember what it was now, it was during the week, and I thought, oh, I remember what that was. It was, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> very pump every now and then, and this sounds really stupid, but it was like a very brief, a second of just like a, an aniseed flavour, and then it was gone, and, but just enough to think, oh, that's nice and unusual. So, yeah, quite nice, that one. Um, I also see that Sam Gareth had bought two new backies out. I was looking at something else. I, I ordered some um, <coughs> McBaron's Original Choice, which I really liked during my trining of aromatics, which I think tastes very much like the um, W.R. Larson signature that uh, Keith sent me, which is all gone now, Keith, by the way. Very, very nice tobacco. And on the side, I just noticed I, go to, I was going to Smoke King. Um, they've got the two new Sam Gower tobaccos on there. For those of you who are not aware of this, and I'm probably <laughs> late to the parties I normally are, and everyone's going, uh, yeah, we know. I've just put a couple of pictures up of it. Yeah, no nice little tin designs. But... <laughs> Whilst getting the pictures, here's the, it's just it's a lot slightly amusing thing I found. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of free advertising on there because it's got the website's name stamped on the photographs. So I don't mind advertising them at all because I use them a lot and they're really, really good. I thought I'd go to the Sam Gareth official site. <laughs> and um, what I did not put on the third picture you'll see, I'm just gonna flash them up there, was, <laughs> was their Christmas tobacco. But look at the age of it. Right, yeah. It's always nice to know that Sam Gareth keep their site updated, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Right. Now, I've also been smoking... Oh, that's quite hot. Some of the other tobaccos at Keith, again, kindly gifted me, which I want to do a uh, <coughs> couple of videos on later on. So... Coming a 20 year old one. So I'll be back doing those. The interesting thing, I've got a few comments during the week which I've read and I've still got loads to catch up on. I think I've now caught up with all those that have been kindly subscribed to me. Yeah, definitely. But I'm probably a bit lax on my comments. And I know that uh, I'm gonna, probably have some lunch in an hour or so. I've got a load of videos. This is the trouble with not keeping up during the week. <laughs> you get a stack, for those of you experience this, to go through. But I had some comments from, I can't remember which video it was about, bloody YouTube at the moment. And it seems a lot of you experiencing similar things. I mean, why I thought you wouldn't is amazing. But you know, I'm glad it's not only me, and or I'm not doing anything wrong anyway. But again, it's happened that I've been keeping an eye on my phone this week when I got my email on there to see what's coming through. And I've got on my subscriptions page on the YouTube, I'm thinking, there's loads I don't even know about. And, all right. So I've got to wade through those. And I want to say, with this pipe here, it reminds me, the two tobaccos that come with it, excuse me a second, <coughs> on its journey, I've got that sorted out now, thanks Aid. Was the vanilla cream flake. Which I've had a couple of flakes out of that really nice. It's you know, been on a long journey, it's dry. The other one was a Davidoff Royalty. And I'll be meaning to get around to rehydrate that because this is just like tinder. It's it's just there's no moisture in this whatsoever. And there's no way I'm gonna smoke as it is. So mm. 
but I'm thinking I'm, is it worth rehydrating because there's no there's no aroma coming out of this bag at all so I wonder whatever flavours I don't know whether it's an aromatic and I haven't looked it up lazy as ever has just gone um, and I don't always know that rehydrating is going to cure that as well but I'll give it a go and I'm going to pass it on because that's required so I haven't tried it yet so <coughs> But in the meantime, I'm enjoying the PSP pipe, as I am the current custodian. <laughs> oh, got out. So nothing more to say really in the pipe world. On my pipe world. I didn't mean to say something. Oh yeah. Hmm. When I was doing my tin opening, okay, for those of you who watch that, I'm sorry to keep making references to these videos, I shouldn't do it really. And it's not a shameless plug for you to go and watch them. <coughs> well, I assume that there are some of you that do what's, you know, the fairly regularly, <laughs> you know, I think we all do it. But I, um, I mentioned a tin in there that uh, I know, well I still had my dad's got it, it was a Elizabethan, Dunhill's Elizabethan mixture. But it was a tin I couldn't hold up because it's in my dad's garage, it's extremely battered. And I was trying to look at, uh, for a magazine I had with a picture of it on, I can use a pictorial. And I finally found it. Now I have three of these, as far as I'm aware I've looked, they are no longer in existence. But I managed to get three of them, they were produced in Holland and under subscription I think they were I can't remember they were quarterly or not so I've obviously they've obviously I don't know whether they went bust and I missed the last one out but this is 2000 and one I oh know 2000 so you know 12 years old now quite a nice little magazine um, sorry I'm doing that this one I, I can't find the other two why were they not together I don't know but Maybe this one focuses on some very famous pipe makers and a really good article on that. Les Wood, um, Barry Jones of Tillshead, um, and who's the other famous one? Well, it doesn't matter, I'm just waffling here. But the point was that in each of the magazines, I guess to subscribers of the magazine, they would send four tobaccos for them to try and post their comments on. And one of them <coughs> was Dunhill Elizabethan mixture. And having read this, well, my first reaction when Keith sent me that was that it was Virginia's, <coughs> I think I said Oriental and Perique, but according to this it's actually Virginia's Cavendish and Perique. Um, now I've had a couple of bowls of that one, the 20 year old one, and I'm just going to reflect on that later on hopefully. But this is a really nice little magazine. Um, check that out, look. That's a Dunhill advert. And all those six backies on there are ones that were reintroduced. I'm going to say again, I want them to reintroduce the Elizabethan mixture. Okay. So that's it really. Um, I've rambled on enough. Um, hopefully you'll see me again this afternoon with a couple of uh, catch-ups on the tobaccos I've smoked. Uh, and I say I'm really sort of running out of things to say guys. <laughs> Ticker tape. Trumpets. So I'll leave it for now. Um, gonna have something to eat and catch up with you later on. Hope you're all well. Take care. Bye.